Have you ever been typing and you've hit the caps lock key by mistake? Of course you have. And that's why some caps lock keys have a step, sometimes called a ladder, to create a gap and stop you from hitting the key by mistake. I already have a step caps lock key, but today I'm going to make another modification to prevent accidental caps lock activation. So this is my keyboard, this is my main keyboard that I actually use all day. And this is a spring with a 1000 gram, a 1 kilogram activation force. Keys normally activate with 50 or 60 grams of force, so this is a lot. First things first, grab the keycap puller and remove the keycap from the caps lock key. Just get that slotted over there, jiggle it gently, and off it comes. There we go, there's the switch underneath. Mine actually has an additional housing as a silencer. So we just remove that housing in order to fully expose the switch, which we're going to yank out of there and take apart. Right, there we go, point. And now with a switch puller, we're going to pull the switch out. This is a hot swappable board. I'm not having to desolder anything in order to get a switch out. A uh, hot swappable means that the switch is actually inserted into a sort of sprung socket thing uh, rather than needing to be soldered in permanently. It's great. Anyway, there's the switch out. And now we use this switch opener to unlatch the sides of the switch so that we can open it up and get access to all its bits gently to the spring. Now every switch it has sort of two latches on the side, little teeth on the end of this fit over it. Now you've got to be careful when you do this so that uh, it doesn't suddenly go pow when you go and pick up a spring from the other side of the room. So gently does it. I think we've got the sides open, there we go, lift the top half off. The grey bit is the actual shaft of the switch. And there you can see the spring around the bottom of it. Hurrah! Here comes the science bit. Now here's an exploded view of exactly the kind of switch that we are using today. And um, You might notice that the shaft in this one is pink, whereas the one that we're using has got a grey shaft. The pink shaft is actually from our Cherry MX Silent Red, whereas we're using our Cherry MX Silent Black. They're pink and they're grey. Yeah, let's not worry about that too much. Anyway, first thing to note is the housing or the shell of the switch. That's these two black plastic bits here. They just hold the whole thing together. Don't do anything particularly special. The next thing I've noticed, the contacts. That's this metal bit here. Quite elaborate folded shape. That's the actual switch. When you press the key down, the shaft pushes against that, causing it to make contact, form a circuit and boom. So here's the shaft or slider, the pink bit in this case. That's the bit that actually goes up and down when you push on it with your finger. It sits on top of the spring. And of course, this is the spring. This is the bit that I'm going to replace today. Let's say this has an activation force normally of between about 50 to 60 grams. It varies according to what type of switch you're using, but 50 to 60 grams is a fairly normal activation force. So the actual transplant is pretty trivial. I'm going to take my new super spring. You might notice I got it from Mechbox. And I'm going to replace the spring that's already there. You might notice the new one is considerably shorter. That's because the existing spring is normally under compression uh, within the switch. But when you're putting in a spring with one kilo force, you don't want it to be sitting there under much compression uh, normally. Otherwise, it might cause the uh, switch to just blow apart while it's sitting there normally. So on it goes. Back in goes the shaft, making sure that it makes contact with the contact. Push on the top half of the housing and we're done. That is it. Very, very simple operation indeed. Or at least it is if you're using hot swap sockets and you don't have to take apart a board. So time to put the thing back in the keyboard. Now whilst I've got this out, I'm just going to give the hole a little brush just to keep it clean with my Mechbox brush. Now I'm not sponsored or anything by Mechbox, I just like their stuff. They've always been extremely kind and helpful to me. And when it comes to odd little bits and pieces, they've really come through. And it's from them that I obtained the one kilogram spring. So we're just gonna slot our switch in, making sure it's the right way up. Shove it back in so it'll sit in the hot swap sockets. There it goes. We're pretty much done. Right, time to slap the caps lock keycap back on top. The sharp eyed will spot that I'm not putting the silencer housing on. Now, pressing the shift key, you see, that's a normal one. And then, oh my goodness me, that is stiff. 
In fact, I pretty much need both hands to be able to push it down. I can just about press it with one hand, but I'm certainly not going to be pressing it by accident. Yeah, I can barely move it. It really does take pretty much almost two hands. I can do it with one, just. And that is us done. That was a very easy mod indeed. And at this point in a mechanical keyboard video, it's generally traditional to have some kind of typing test in order to showcase the sound, but I really don't see the point. Uh, this key basically doesn't make a sound because I'm never going to be able to get it to bottom out. Well, that's it. I'm never going to be pressing caps lock again by accident. The keyboard is a GMMK. The switches are a mix of Cherry MX Silent Reds and Blacks, Blacks on the modifier keys. And the keycaps are a Domi Key Dolch SA set. Very nice. I like them a lot. Anyway, until next time, draw!